So early on Thursday morning, kind of afternoon, we meet at North High School, load everything on the buses, try and get the best seats um, with whoever you're best friends with. Get over, we leave at North High School in Sioux City. We travel down, make a few stops along the way. Drive for hours and hours and hours until we get to eat fast food dinner, um, one of many fast food meals. It's a really nice view rolling into Houston at like 7, 8 o'clock Friday morning. And then, like the most relaxing part of the competition is when you get to go to Galveston. We get to ride the ferry across, feed the birds, kind of see, learn a little bit of the history of Galveston. After that, we go to Galveston and hang out at the beach for a little while. Some students have never left Northwest Iowa, and some of them have traveled the country. And then just kind of chill on the beach, eat ice cream, look at jellyfish. And that's a really cool experience. That's another time where I've formed a lot of relationships um, with kids not from my school that have ended up being on my team. And we, a lot of us have stayed in contact, even from the kids that I met two years ago. For a lot of them, it's a big culture change. Um, so just, just a little enjoyment to see a little part of the country that they may have not seen before. Being here at NASA working at JSC, um, just seeing the atmosphere around is amazing for them. They, they come here Friday evening and they're kids and you'll see them tomorrow and they're young adults. They just, they're growing up right before our eyes. It's just amazing. What I've learned or what I might need to learn, I can apply for the rest of my life. I can learn that this is something I want to do for the rest of my life, I love this, or no, I hate this, I, I don't want to do this at all. And I think both of those are really good experiences for students. And then getting students involved in real world opportunities, um, I could see that and that's what I really love about this competition is students get to see that their learning is so important to the real world, see how it connects to real world opportunities. So, so we have to do what you call systems engineering where the different groups that are working on the different pieces have to regularly coordinate to make sure they know what each other is doing and exchange information back and forth so when it's all said and done, you put together an integrated whole propulsion or proposal that describes the entire plan that their team is, is proposing and it all holds together and makes sense. Who's sorry? You're sorry? Sorry. Never know. Do you have the surface area of the bamboo housing? Yeah, that's what the thing is, and they know that. It's the four airlocks that accordions out. And but then we also need to know how much area it's gonna take for the airlocks that go outside in this space. And then the other one is creating just like a really basic design of what our settlement is gonna look like. Basically, pick out points um, in the RFP that you see that are going to be a problem. I know in operations there's already some that I looked at that I'm like, I've never seen this before. We're encouraging curiosity and like self-learning, self-exploration. So is this still current? I asked them to come by with a newer amount. I hope that we don't have five kilometers. Which department? What time are we? 
Sony. Sony. Oh. Okay. All right. What if we use the the nanobots to actually like put inside? Uh, connect that to the fifth element that Jack Bacon talked about. That's a good relationship. It just need one big thing. It's just labeling, and then one big thing for. Uh, dimensions and one big thing for storage and where it's allocating. Yeah. If you want to experience what work life is like in real life, as a high school student, if you want to know what your life might be as you, if you become an engineer, come to this competition, you'll find out. It's an opportunity to learn how to communicate and cooperate and collaborate with other people. So the RFP is a request for proposal. It is what a customer will put out, um, in this case the, it's, we call it the Foundation Society, and it basically lists every single thing that they want um, this space settlement to include. So there's some things that are implied like clothing and furniture, but it also lists um, how many people are going to be on the space settlement. Um, it lists what they want for storage space or what they want to use as an engine or that kind of thing. And the, the stressful point is that you only have 21 hours to do this. So from 10.30 on, on Saturday morning until 7.30 on Sunday morning, there is no sleep for the, for the workers, you know. My record at these competitions, I was awake for 43 hours straight once. They're exhausted on Sunday morning then at 9 o'clock when they start making their presentations. Lots of like Red Bull and energy drinks really helps. So it's just a wonderful experience and this actually uh, very accurately emulates real life engineering situations. I've realized that the main important thing that a team needs to win is communication. Since there are 50 people, the degrees of freedom of communication are 2,000 plus. Well, they're learning industry skills and that's teamwork. Normally a, a, a large team in a high school project would be six or eight students. We have 50. They must use an organization chart and they yet must use management techniques. If you're not as direct and detailed as possible, your entire project gets messed up and suddenly your specific location is not on Mars, it's now on Mercury and you're like, wait, that's not what the project is. They give you an impossible amount of work to do um, in a very short amount of time and most kids coming into this have no idea what to expect. But what we're looking for is not only that kids will realize what an engineering career is, but they might come out of this saying, now I understand why I need to study math and science. So we teach all of these skills that are very, very useful in industry. Being elected into this position gave me a lot more responsibility than I've ever really had. Just having industry experience like this and being able to talk about the kinds of concepts that they are working with on a daily basis will give me a huge leg up. While it can be difficult and you're just fed up, you're just like, oh, just know what I'm talking about. It's in my head. You have to be patient, you have to be calm, direct, specific, and you also have to make sure that the other person knows what you're talking about. So communication is definitely a very important part. So this competition for these young people emulates that uh, in a capsule, you know, over a two and a half day period, emulates what they will all go through if they become scientists and engineers. The most fun thing for me is to collaborate with all these different people and have that one vision with a capital V as Anita says uh, towards the common goal which is the 50 page proposal on Sunday at 9 o'clock that we will be presenting. There's a vast majority of the students that go on to be successful after participating in this competition. Uh, one young man is running his own company. He said he uses the skills that he learned in the competition every day in his company. One employee here at JSC that went to this competition three times and then he got involved at JSC through being part of this competition. I've gotten internships due to this competition because they realized that a president of a 50-man team and the vice president of a 50-man team has qualities that companies are looking for. This is like on every single college application of mine. It's yeah. just like I gush about it whenever I can. I think the fact that it's going to be on my resume would be really nice. It's really an incredible experience to be able to work with people who are in the aerospace industry, whether they're software engineers, mechanical engineers. The data that we collect from this competition has been amazing to show the percentage of students that go into an engineering field or a STEM career from this competition. I want to be an aerospace engineer, so this is like, this is exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to build space settlements. I want to think about going to Mars. 
We can't take NASA with us to Northwest Iowa, but we can still give students these opportunities. You get to work with NASA heroes like Norm Chaffee, where you walk in um, at Internationals to Kennedy Space Center, they show you the video of when they like decided to start building space shuttles, and you can see Norm starts tearing up a little bit. He's like, I was there. There's so many benefits of coming to this competition. First of all, meeting all the people such as Norm and Anita and Jack Bacon. All these people have tremendous experience. Even Norm said he had 50 years plus in, at NASA to get his perspective on the future and the past and how we're growing uh, in science and engineering is fascinating. Just being able to bounce questions off Norm of how the industry has changed or talking to Anita about how she was one of the only women aerospace engineers in her time. The other aspect of the professionals they get to work with during the competition and those professionals, engineers at NASA, Boeing, other companies are not necessarily there to give them the answers but to challenge them and to guide them along the way, more of a facilitator type of what we're looking for in education as well. Um, it's a really inspiring thing and they give career advice that I don't think I could get anywhere else.